processing. Greetings, greetings, family. We are preparing to go live right now. Sister Shanice in the house, coming to you live and direct from the Gambia. Looking forward to you joining me this evening, family, for another fantastic, bombastic show. So uh, let me just check over in YouTube that we are, in fact, live. As you can see, I've got my guest in the house, and uh, we are ready to hit the show uh, and get the show on the road. Yes, indeed. Okay, so family, family, welcome, welcome to another Sister Shanice show. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Thank you in advance for your contributions to the discussions, for your input in the chat. Thanking you so, so much. Yes, family, we want you to be the change that you want to see. That is the topic for our discussion today. As you can see, I've got our brother Naya in the house. How you doing, brother Naya? Yes, greetings, Sister Shanice. I'm very good, thank you. And yourself, how are you? I'm very well. I'm on Mama Africa land, so yeah. I'm happy. I'm reconnecting my DNA, my Asian ancestors, you know, that were taken away from this soil. I am reconnecting them uh, to the soil of Mama Africa. So absolutely delighted about that. And I'm and, in the uh, belly of the beast fighting the good fight. You know, some of us need to be there doing the works, my brother, and mm -hmm. rising you up, up, up for the great works that you are doing on a daily basis. And we're going to be getting into a lot more of what you do uh, in a short while. So, uh, yeah, we're just uh, going to allow the family time to come through the door and to hook us up live on YouTube. There's been a change. I don't know why the UK, UK keeps playing around with the clocks, but... Uh, yeah, the clocks have gone forward in the UK. So we're still, you know, at the old time here uh, in West Africa time. It's 7 p.m. here in West Africa, but it's 8 p.m. where you are now. And it tends to cause a little bit of confusion because my audience is international. So hopefully, you know, they will all be logging in and they will be finding us here. So my brother, by way of opening, what well, one in the UK right now? This time change in business is so outdated. You know, mm -hmm. it's the, the purpose of um, adding an extra hour was to allow children to go on the farms in the summertime to pick the crops. Children don't do that no more. They need to stop that nonsense and stop playing around with nature. Is that what it was about? That's what it's for, to allow children to go, to more, allow more um, daylight hours for, for um, picking crops. Wow. I knew it was linked to farming and I knew it was to give the farmers an extra hour in the morning, but I didn't realize that the, the, the children that and was... And we have a six week, <laughs> we have a six week holiday in the summer after school and that was for children to go on the farms and pick the fruit wow. and veg. Wow. Oh, they even exploit their own children. Ah, huh? Try getting the children out there now. You're mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, it causes confusion around the world because when we all have to adjust, you know, our thinking and our planning uh, to accommodate the, the change in the UK. So um, let's uh, get the show on the road, family, family. Uh, I'd just like to remind you of uh, some of the guests that we've got coming up. So uh, let me share the screen uh, with you. Let's see, uh, share one participant uh, to share the scheme. Okay, let's find, uh, yeah, there's the document there. Let me share this with you, family. You should be looking at my screen now and seeing the handsome face of our guest, Naya. Yes, and my eyes are open to what people keep on saying. My eyes are open. <laughs> the small eye. Um, so he is the CEO of the National Association of Black Supplementary Schools, and we're going to be having a really interesting discussion with our brother Naya this evening. Also, coming up next strong, we've got our brother Leo Mohammed. 
Woo, 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 woo. Community activist, religious leader, public speaker, comedian, also member of our community. Coming up uh, next strong Wednesday, the 6th of April. Then, uh, due to popular demand, we are bringing back our panel. Yes, we've got Sister Sheila, Dr. Abu. We have got Brother Jammers and Brother Kwame Gonza that's going to be uh, on our panel on uh, the Wednesday, the 13th of April. It's going to be awesome. So look forward to you joining us for that. Then uh, the foreign strong, we have none other than our brother, leader, Bandaka, spiritual leader of the al Kabalan Revivalist Movement. And I'm sure if you've been watching his series of uh, revolutionary leaders, uh, that have been assassinated, you have been getting some insights, you have been getting some history, a history from an African-centered perspective, you know, that you're not going to get in any school, college or university. That's our brother, Lida Bandaka, bringing it to us real, bringing it to us raw. Then uh, we go over to our series of African history shows. We've got Dr. Reverend Shock Matthews, founding minister of the first frequency of oneness. Wow, wow, wow. Family, families, you are a, a subscriber to his YouTube channel. You will know that he is phenomenal. You will know that his shows are always off the hook. Privileged and honor to have him as a guest on Wednesday, the 27th of April. And then we've got our brother, Franklin Jones, author of The Black Matrix. We're going to be delving into the psychological warfare that's been waged against us as a people. A warfare that, you know, we're at war, for those that you don't know. Yeah, there is, there is wars that have been waged against us on a multiplicity of levels. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, the war that's been waged against us from a, 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 an educational perspective. But there's also a war against us on a psychological perspective. And our brother, Franklin Jones, is going to be explaining to us precisely, you know, how that war actually works and how the media is used as a major tool in this propaganda warfare against us as a people. Then we've got another panel discussion coming up on the 11th of May. Don't miss these shows, family. Dr. Clyde Winters, if you don't know about the works of this great, awesome, phenomenal uh, historian, linguistic, anthropologist, educator, you need to family, check him out. His works is phenomenal. And we are honored to have our brother, Dr. Clyde, for two shows back to back, because the topics that he's going to be bringing family is going to be critical to our learning. This is learning, as I said, you're not going to get in any of the mainstream school colleges or universities. Get your children around your laptop, around your screens and learn, learn, learn. Our brothers are coming on this platform to share information, to, to enlighten us, to educate us, to add to the knowledge we already have. And when we learn, let's share that learning, family. Dr. Mm. Clyde Winters, two sessions with Dr. Clyde. Then we've got Professor Kaba. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Most of you will know him from the documentary, The Hidden Colors. Mm. And we're honored to have him in the house on Wednesday, the 1st of June. Then returning Leader Bandaka for more educational and enlightening uh, topics for discussions. And uh, then we're going to be having our sister, Dr. Marie Charles, making waves at the moment. Family, family, uh, I first came across the works of this great uh, doctor on uh, brother, uh, Shock, Reverend Shock's show. And wow, 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 she has been doing some amazing research into uh, the origins of um, Black uh, or African Indigenous people in Ireland. Um, I've ordered mm -hmm. her book. I'm so looking forward to its arrival uh, here in the Gambia. And she's going to be coming and she's going to be sharing some of her knowledge with us. And she's been writing uh, uh, books and, and, and theses and, and articles, you know, dispelling the myth 
that Africans came to Europe as slaves. No, we did not. We were the indigenous people of Europe. And there is a phenomenal amount of evidence to prove it. And Dr. Marie Charles has been doing the work. So family, that's just a taster of the lineup that we've got. And oh yes, I've recently also bought our brother Tony Warner. Oh my gosh, this brother is phenomenal in the Tony. UK as well. Hey, big up brother. Uh, uh, yeah. Tony Warner. I'll tell it you a story about Tony later because he was oh. he was he was at the forefront of the beginning of NEBS. I'll tell you the story later. Okay, okay. we look forward to hearing that. <laughs> and we've got our brother Tony Walker coming on the 6th of July. So keep it locked, family. These white live Wednesday shows. Every, every Wednesday, just think live Sister Shanice show, okay? <laughs> live Sister Shanice show. And then when you come in, let us know in the chat, family, where in the world you're watching us from. You know, just greet us as you come in. Uh, just want to welcome you, just want to welcome you. Let's go over to YouTube and uh, see what's going on uh, over there. So family, family, thank you so much in advance for contributing towards the discussion that we're having. Just want to welcome each and every one of you. Sister Afri Jamo, rise up yourself, my sis. Oh, beautiful sis who joins us every strong, all the way from Ghana. Rise up yourself. And we've got Demo Q in the house greeting us. And uh, we've got uh, Arlette in the house. Rise up, rise up, Arlette. And uh, we've also got a uh, known child in the house that's rising us up in the chat. So yeah, come on family, we know you're out there. Let us know that you're watching. Let us know where in the world you're watching us from. And uh, yeah, give us uh, some greetings in the chat. Love to get your messages and you can actually interact with us throughout the show live and direct via the chat. Okay, so any questions, comments, thoughts and opinions that you have that you want to communicate as part of this show, drop it in the chat. Why demo cue me? Sorry to hear say Paul out there in the UK. Oh dear, time for you to visit Mama Africa. Danny, watching us from rugby, rise up yourself. It call out there to Danny. I hope it's not too cold uh, for you there. Well, uh, like, uh, like the sister was saying, when she's doing the research about uh, us being indigenous to Europe, the weather is not a problem. This <laughs> myth about us not liking the cold is a myth. <laughs> it is a myth indeed. But, you know, there is a system. There, there was this, um, some of the historians have come up with this line that, oh, you know, we as Africans uh, turned white because of the cold, you know. <laughs> One of their theories, uh, evolution theories, you know, to try and explain uh, white people. No. Uh, white people are not black people who turn white. <laughs> white people are descendants of Neanderthals. Uh, it's in their DNA. Their own geneticists and biologists have proven that. Okay, Africans were Africans wherever they were in the world, whether yeah. they were in the Americas, whether they were in the Caribbean, whether they were in Europe or on the continent. And we've always had our beautiful complexion and our melanin. Thank in you very much. multiple of shades. Hey, <laughs> there you go. So uh, family, family, we welcome you to tonight's show. Uh, as you can see, our wonderful, wonderful guest is in the house. Delighted, absolutely delighted. Uh, to have our brother on board. So, you know, let's uh, go over and uh, introduce our brother. Oh, and, and, and hear the voice of our brother. Uh, our brother Naya Imara is going to be speaking to us today. The topic is Be the Change that You Want to See. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, he is the CEO of NABS, the National Association of Black Supplementary Schools. My brother, tell us a bit about the uh, NABS organization. Uh, you founded it. Why? I, I'm a kind of, even in school, I'm a kind of person who likes solutions. If I can't find an answer to a problem, then I'll look for one. And me growing up, um, being, being, you know, being quite intelligent, I still in the lower classes. So I was probably in the era of the um, children of, you know, um, being put, black African children being put in the lower classes. Uh, what's that book called written by um, Brother Cody? This education. Oh, by who? Um, Subliminal, uh, sub, sub, 
human, whatever, they put us in the lower classes, isn't it? But the thing is, though, I... Oh, yes. You know okay. what I mean? My brain is fried. Stuff normal. <laughs> That's yeah. the one. Yeah. But the thing is, I have always done well in school, but I was always in the lower classes. And it wasn't until my last six months of my whole school life, because back then it's like, um, in the secondary school, it's like from year one to five. So mm -hmm. now it's like year 11. Mm -hmm. So I got to know in year 11, I was in the lower classes, teacher decides, oh, you need to be in the higher classes, like doing like O level. We used to do O level in them days. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've got six months left before I leave school completely. And now you're telling me you want me in the higher classes. I mm -hmm. said, listen, it's not to me. If you want me to go there, I'll go there. But you know what I mean? It's kind of late still. My last six months, my whole school life, they say I should be in the higher classes. Mm -hmm. Kind of late still, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but, so I'm, I'm, that's always playing on my mind. And obviously, be, having such low expectations and and always in the lower classes, you have you, you know, and my family weren't really pushing me either. I just wanted to do the menial jobs, like either join the army, be a chef, or, or play football. I didn't have the high aspirations to do anything above that. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, I went through um, school. I ended up being a chef. Nobody knows I'm a chef, but I'm a chef by trade. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I'm going through life and just hearing about miseducation of black children, black children not doing well, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, what, what's the issue? What's going on here? As I'm getting older now, I'm, just, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm starting to be, get more active. I, I saw the film Black Panther mm -hmm. and uh, I saw it in Brixton and uh, Huey Rose was there from Black, Black Panther UK. He says, look, if you're angry about the film, because they highlighted how the CIA put drugs into the African heritage community in America. I'm like, Rod, I mean, that's bad, man. So he says, look, come to a meeting and let's discuss that. So I went to a meeting and said, look, join the Black Panther UK. I said, I'm like, Rod, yeah, I want to be active now. I want to start doing something. I didn't know about much about organizations back then. So I thought, yeah, let me be active. Do a few marches. I think this is when Brian Douglas was uh, murdered by the police. Big demonstration turned into a riot in, in Brixton. And, and then we, we had another meeting after that. And then came um, four brothers from PACM, the Pan-African Congress Movement. Now in the Black Panther uh, uh, meeting, they had, audience was all African heritage. But they had an Asian guy, an Indian guy, a, um, Chinese guy and an Indian guy, and an African guy on the, on the panel. I'm, so I'm thinking, boy, we, we're the ones that are doing the fight. I didn't see no Chinese people in the, in the marching or the, or the demonstrations. We didn't see no Asians, but you know what? We are all black when it comes to demonstrating. The PSCM brothers came in and said, listen, we're, 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 you know, we are the ones that are doing the fighting. Why are we fighting for them? Well, they have no respect for us. They, they, you know, they, we can't work in their place. They just sell to us and they've got no respect for us. I thought, you know what, you got a point. I'm joining PSCM. <laughs> Don't ship. So yeah, through PSCM, I learned so much about African history so much you know i mean we just do the regular uh, wednesday uh, evening events doing african history we have robin walker there we had um um lots of speakers coming in um god can't remember them all but it, i learned everything we had a saturday school there and it was amazing and then listening to um genesis radio one time there was an advert this is 90, 1991 92 there's an advert on genesis radio for somebody to come and volunteer at a saturday school and i thought okay i'm free on a saturday and let me pop in and see what's going on. Let me try and help the younger generation. Younger generation. So I went there to help out, but I learned so much myself. I actually learned how to do maths from a parent. So in school, I had five math teachers in one year. I was so confused when it comes to exams. Like this one, one you know, when it comes to um, uh, fractions, one teacher did it on a half a page. Next teacher did it on a full page for one sum. Then the next teacher did a few lines for one. I'm so confused. This parent came into this Saturday school teaching young children did fractions in such a simple way. I'm like, rah, it's that easy. Why I wouldn't at all like that in school? And the school was full of our children. And the most of the teachers there were African heritage men, which we didn't get too often in, our, in mainstream schools. So I, I was learning so much. Was there having electricity in, in Africa way beyond Europe? Was there, you know, the hieroglyphics, the pyramids, even outside Egypt, like you know, um, Songhai, the Ghana, uh, Ghana um, um, civilizations, and around the world, Africans were all over the world. I'm learning all this, learning about Murray Seacole long before they even discussed it for the curriculum. So one time, this um, father came in with his son. He was five years old, and he had been excluded from five nurseries. And the last nursery said that the boy was unteachable. I'm like, wow, that's a bit deep for a five-year-old. 
We taught that boy how to write his name in hieroglyphics. And Siba Kwaku, Prophet Kwaku, was running the, is still there now at the um, African Nubia Community and Foundation School. That's where I was te teaching in uh, 91, 92. So, and they're still going down, still in Wandsworth. And, they, and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. So I said to myself, you know what? My children are coming to this school. It's not, there's, there'll be no choice, it'll be compulsory. So this is like 10 years later now, I have my children. I said, you know what? You're going to Saturday school. I'm like, what? On a Saturday? I said, hell yeah, you're going to Saturday school. And the, the, problem, <laughs> the problem was though, we used to go to uh, martial arts, or machine for martial arts for African heritage people in Tottenham on a Friday night. So we was coming home about 11, 11.30, on a Friday night and then getting up like eight o'clock to go to Saturday school. But I want my children to do better than I, what I did. So I say, you know, we've got to go. They enjoy, when they got there, they enjoyed it and they made some good friends and it was really good. But eventually that school, the, the um, uh, New Bill, uh, African Community Foundation School, they moved to Brixton from Stockwell. I was like, fine, we can do that. We went to that building. Building was mash up and terrible. We have issues with buildings in, for our Saturday schools, and we need people to step up, especially the African Heritage Churches, to step up and let us use their buildings. Building was mash up, inappropriate. So in the end, they moved down to Croydon. So like, I'm in Westminster, traveling from Westminster to Croydon. We had to get up, like, do the martial arts on Friday night, get them at 11.30 at night, get up at 6 o'clock, go to the Saturday school in Croydon. I was so dedicated, and I didn't know about any other Saturday schools. Well, um, Siba Akimbide is still there now. He said to me, Brother Nia, I see what you're doing. You, you know, you're doing your martial arts Friday night and you're getting up early to come down to the school on, on a Saturday. But, and, I, and I feel sorry for you, brother. But you know what? There's another Saturday school near where you live. I'm like, really? Okay, okay. This was the Imhotep School of Knowledge based in Kilburn. I thought, okay, all right, we're there. I'm gone. <laughs> it's much nearer. I get to get some sleep in the morning. And it was great. It was fantastic. We taught, we learned so much. There, Robin Walker was part of the, the, he helped with the curriculum there. It was so good. But eventually, I think due to lack of um, promotion and, and stuff like that, but, but, and there's a lot of family members were there, cousins, aunties, all that. Once they grew up and, and the, the children became teenagers, it was hard for them to get them back into a Saturday school. And bit by bit, the numbers went down. Lack of advertising, social media wasn't really there. So um, we had one parent that was traveling from Stratford to Kilburn, it, one end of London to the other to bring her child to a Saturday school. She was so dedicated, she wanted to bring her child to that Saturday school. So while I was at the Imtech School of Knowledge, we went to an event put on by the 100 Black Men at the time, and it was Tony Warner putting an event uh, through the 100 Black Men. And at that event, there were six other African heritage Saturday schools. I'm like, right, there's more than two. <laughs> Brilliant. So before the event started, I said, listen, everyone, listen. At the end of the event, Let's all get together, let's exchange numbers and exchange resources and keep in touch. And they say, yeah, 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 it sounds good. Event finished and everybody go on about their business. I thought, no, nah, man, it's not right. And actually one of the Saturday schools was on the doorstep of that sister who was traveling from, from East London. And she didn't know about them. I'm like, that's not right. That can't be right. We have to find out where these schools are. So I did a bit of research, I find out where these schools were and started finding these schools. And, and during all that time now, when I had my children, I was a single parent. From the time my daughter was two years old and my son was seven months old, I was a single parent. So I'm going to lots of parents' evenings, uh, events, lots of events. I'm only the only man there, the only black man there. But when I meet the sisters now, all they complain is about, oh, so children's not doing well in school, racism in school, blah, 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 blah. So based on my experience with the Saturday school, my first response is being solution-based, mister. Wow. As I'm like, why don't you bring your children to a Saturday school? And the first answer always was, I don't know where they are. I can't find some. I thought, well, you know what? Give me a number. I'll give you the address of these schools that I found. And so all I ever got was complain that we can't find a Saturday schools, can't afford it. And I thought, you mean you can't afford it? Your son is wearing a £60 football top and £60 trainers. That's a full year school fees. What's more important, looking good or thinking great? So I'll deal with the situation of not finding them. You deal with your finances and find, or work out what's best for your children. So I found all these schools and I thought, end up, you know, let me put them on a website. And that's where NEBS came about. Through Tony Warner's event, seeing the other schools, I thought, you know what, let me share the information of where these are with other parents. That's my part done. I ain't paying for everybody. <laughs> that's how NEBS came about. Wow. Solution-based action. Yeah. Yeah, my brother, you know, 
brilliant about you being an action-based person, also an action-based parent. Uh, you mentioned in there that you was a single parent. I see here, you was a single parent for 14 years. And obviously during that time, you wanted the best for your children. We heard you talking about then, you know, doing martial arts and, uh, you know, how dedicated you were to bringing them to a Saturday school. You know, I just want to rise you up and big you up as a father, being a single father. But, but how was it for you during those 14 years, you know, being a single parent? You I'm not a big kid myself, you know, so it was quite, it was fun. Because <laughs> I, I was always at the parks, we was going swimming, we was playing tennis, bike riding, we did a whole heap of things. I'm a big kid myself, so I'm enjoying it. So, and we used to go to parks in all different areas of London. So when we used to go out, we knew people in North, South, East, West London. Yeah. So when we go into the parks, I'm, like, I'm there. I'm swinging, on, on, <laughs> climbing down the stairs and swinging on the banisters. And I'm saying, Daddy, Daddy, stop it. We ain't got off the bus yet. <laughs> like, Sorry, I wait. And the, brother, the driver's like, come off the bus, man. Sure. Sounds <laughs> weird from a Chinese guy, but never mind. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm just a big kid. So, um, but you know the, the the mother wasn't too kind. She tried desperately to get the children off me, and mm. it didn't work. But she went through. I had to go through hells just to keep them. And you know, yeah. So it, and yeah, I have to be you know have to be very careful. But it was good. I mean, it was mostly good fun. It really, really was. And I became yeah. parent governor at the, at the school. Mm -hmm. So I, I found out what was. It's quite intimidating at the first because it's like middle class white people chatting all these speaky spokies. So I had to mm -hmm. say, Listen, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. But what does that mean? I wasn't too proud to say. There's another parent there who didn't say a word. She came late and left early and didn't say a word. To me, that's a waste of space for somebody who could be there and be active and find out what is going on at the school. Mm -hmm. and, and it was quite a, a um, prominent time because the teacher at their school was like doing some underhand things. So we had to get rid of her. And mm -hmm. she was like voting previously, she was voting like head teacher of the year. Mm -hmm. So there's some big teams that are going on. So I, I had a big input in that. Mm -hmm. Good but also, I was you. able to keep an eye on my children when they're in school. Yes, yes. Yeah, good for you. And um, I'd like to encourage, you know, parents who are watching, you know, if you've got children in the school, consider becoming a parent governor, you know, consider taking an active role in your school. It's so, so important. You'll be able to look at the reports, look at the results of the schools, you know, analyze which teachers in which class the class English class for example failed then you know there's some important questions to be asked who's in this class you know why is it that year on year the children in this class are, are failing you know so abysmally so a really important job uh so, and well done to you how many children did you bring up uh, uh I, I brought, I've got three children I brought up two uh, the, the, my first child was with me for the first three years. Then we broke up with the mother. But the, 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 first, the first two, um, they were with me from, from birth. But all oh, three wow. children, I held them first. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And uh, how are they doing now? Yes, um, my, my son, he had a difficult time in school. And he basically got excluded a week before they found exams. That's they what they do, school. isn't it? It's deliberate. Just like no, me, not, necessarily, not necessarily, because I, I've got to hold my hand up to the school. They bent over backwards for my son. Maybe yeah. because I was there as the parent governor and I was able to yeah. see everything that was going on. Yeah. But they did bend over backwards for him. Like other children would have been. Why been suspending just things. before his exams? You know, if they could just. Yeah, but he did exactly. My son was just so arrogant. He said, they're not going to exclude me. They need my good results for their league tables, <laughs> which was the case. <laughs> I said, you can still do it. You can come back and do your exams. So he was kind of arrogant, but he knew. <laughs> so he got to do his exams then, did he? Yeah, but you okay. know, he, he, he's, he's very intelligent and he, he gets to points where, you know, I don't need to do this. He does the minimum. I hell trying to get him to do the homework. I, I'm against homework. I'm really against homework. It's like, go to school, do eating, come home, family life. And I was against homework. I actually campaigned as a parent gun to get, um, to get um, homework put online. Because mm -hmm. the weird thing was, you know, you, as parents, we struggle to get the children to do the homework and they want to do the minimum and go play games or watch TV. You have to get them to like, do it properly. No, no, no. If you're a proper parent, you make sure they do it properly, then you can go and do your thing and relax. Well, I made sure my son did more than three lines for his mm -hmm. homework. Come back, do it again, do it again. And after all that, they bring it to school and the teacher's like, okay, and just puts it down. They don't even mark it. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was at the school, so yeah. listen, 
I don't get yeah. going for hell trying to get my son to do his homework. Are you not even looking at it? You're not even marking it. Oh, I'm a bit busy. You know, I'm no, no, excuses, excuses. No, 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 no. Either you mark it or we don't do the homework. So I'll find a solution. And I said to him, look, why don't you just put the homework online so we can see what's going on? The computer, the, 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 the program marks it for you. It's all marked. We, parents can see the marking straight away. That was a solution. So they've got some program called Sam. It was so simple. And they did that, did they? Yeah, they did that. Good, yeah. Well, that removes, you know, the, the teacher that isn't encouraging the child by not working uh, through the homework. Because if the child sees it, if the teacher, if they know the teacher's just going to ignore the homework, they're not going to bother doing it, are they? So uh, that switches the child off and so they don't bother. Then, you know, the child becomes disillusioned and thinking, why should I? Yeah. But, um, and I'm then we have the, the teacher, other end. I, I know the teachers, they, when they mark the work, they mark it at home. Yeah, once they yeah. finish teaching, they go home and mark it. Yeah, so I felt it for the teachers. So it had to yeah. be a solution for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And then the uh, the other big challenge is is that children who are intelligent and feel that they're not being stretched in school that's a, a real problem because they're going yeah. to school day in day out and they're getting bored because they know that they could be doing so much more and so much better. And that the was average the issue with my daughter. Uh, Schools, yeah, the average school that our children tend to go to are designed not to stretch our children. They're designed, you know, just to give them the bare minimum, you know, mm. to, to go out and do some pathetic nine to five. And our children are so much greater than that. So that, yeah, was, I mean, a, that was a challenge with your daughter, was it? Yeah, well, you know, my son, my, my son was just arrogant anyway, but my daughter, she, no, she, they're both very intelligent because of the Saturday school. They went there from the age four. They usually take them at five, but because it's me, they let them come at about four years old. <laughs> but they, she learned to write her name in hieroglyphics, like with the same child that was there before. She learned about the hieroglyphics. She learned about the pyramids. She learned about Cleopatra being an African woman. She learned about Mary Seacole long before the campaign to have her on the, on the um, curriculum. So this is in, while she's in uh, re, um, nursery. So when she re, went to reception and then went to uh, year one in them days, they went to the British Museum and they went to the African se section and they were talking about looking at the hieroglyphics on the wall. She says, Miss, I know what that means. So she's just like, of course you do, you, uh, of course you do, dear, and turns her back on her thinking she's like, she's a joker. She's mm -hmm. like, Miss, Miss, I know what it means. I can read the hieroglyphics. She says, okay, the young lady, if you think you're smart, come and teach the class. And she did. She went through the pronunciations, what they meant, the ra, ra, na, everything. She's like, she's like what? <laughs> came back and told me this story. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yes, our system works. Mm -hmm. Our system works. And another incident was, uh, in my daughter's class, they were talking about Florence Nightingale. Mm -hmm. She's like, Miss, Miss, it wasn't Florence Nightingale doing the work, it was, it was Mary Seacole. Yeah. And teacher's like, who's Mary Seacole? She gets mm -hmm. up, teaches the class about Mary Seacole. She learned that through our education system, our Saturday schools. Yeah, she yeah. was well ahead. And my daughter's um, registered reading age was 18 months ahead of her school year. My son's reading age was 12 months ahead of everybody else in their school year, down to teaching our own in our Saturday schools, our supplementary schools. Wow. And what does that say about, you know, our ability to teach our children? Just yeah. imagine if we had them full time, what the results would be like. Exactly. But people don't want to do it. People don't want to fund it. People don't want to get, get involved. People are just scared to do things by ourselves. And that has yeah. to change. It yeah. has to change. We can't yeah. keep on just chatting about it and not doing it. Right. And that, that takes me to uh, child Q. Uh, I'm not going to let this one drop because uh, for those of you who have been uh, following British news, uh, you'll be aware, let me just bring it up, of a really awful, dreadful situation in um, a school here in uh, the UK, in, in Hackney, uh, where the local authority child safeguarding had to carry out a review, and the review report was very damning indeed. Uh, it was looking into the case of a child that they called Child Q, a young uh, African female child uh, of secondary school age, who was age 15, and uh, one of the teachers decided that she smelt of cannabis and therefore needed to be searched. They searched her, didn't find anything, was still not satisfied, called the police into the school. Four police officers turned up, two male, two female police officers, and the two female officers 
strip searched this child on the school premises, got her to take off all her clothing. The child was on her period, got her to remove her sanitary towel, uh, spread her butt cheeks and cough so they could make sure she wasn't hiding any drugs. It was the most wicked and intrusive form of child abuse and sexual abuse of a child that I've heard of, you know, in a school for a long, long time. This would never have happened in uh, one of our Saturday schools. My brother, I'm sure you are only too aware of this case. When you heard about it, what were your thoughts? The first one is, yes, disgraceful behavior by the authorities, by the by the police and the teaching. The parents should have been involved in what was going on. They should never have done that. You know, the police did it without the school teachers being there and they shouldn't have done that without the parent being notified and present. It shouldn't have been done. And the report even said the, the school should not have even called the police in the first place. It's something they can deal with in-house. But this is an issue I've been dealing with for many, many years. You know, not necessarily in this particular case. But the first thing I think of is when these things kick off and people start shouting and screaming and marching and dashing up petitions, it's like, where was the mother able to go within our community to get help? Why did it take two years for this information to come out? Why weren't we dealing with it as a community? I imagine if this was a Jewish girl or an a, or a Asian child, they've got their communities that will deal with that ASAP. It probably wouldn't even happen in the first place. Mm -hmm. So when people start pointing things at the police and the school system that we keep on calling racist, I'm looking like, what are we going to do about it? What should we have done about it in the first place? It shouldn't have happened in the first place. Because mm -hmm. so many people want to jump up and scream and march and petition, but don't get involved in solutions and just sit around and wait for the next thing to jump up and down and get angry about. We have to stop being reactionary and be proactive. People say, never again, never again. So what are you going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again? We've got multiple of organisations that are out there right now that, we, that need support, financial support, they need um, people to be involved, and they need Black African heritage businesses to, to support them. Stop begging the, our people that we call racists for funding all the time. Fund our own organisations, and this ain't happening in the first place. But also, we need to be dealing with how our children are in these institutions. These are institutions that are not designed for our children, but they're in there. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and, they're, and a lot of them are misbehaving. I'm having to deal with this situation. My, my uh, remit is Saturday school, supplementary schools, but I'm constantly getting calls from parents in mainstream school. And I've had to deal with the drugs in schools at my own children's school. There is a problem with drugs in schools. Children, school children buying and selling drugs in school. And that's something we can't keep on hiding from. We need to deal with that. I stop brushing under carpet and blaming police and blaming schools. Our children need to be dealt with within our community. I mean, I mean just mention this to, to some parents and they think, oh, oh, there was a girl at school selling drugs from people, you know, from her bra in school. I'm like, you what? Nobody said anything about it. Oh yeah, my son, yeah, yeah. there's always somebody selling drugs. There was people say, you know, people just don't roll it off their tongue like it's nothing. It is a massive deal what's going on in mainstream schools. And we can't keep on blaming the oppressor. We've got to deal with it ourselves and stop hiding behind emotions all the time. That's my response. It should never have happened because we should have been organized from day one. Now that it's happened, everybody knows, what are you going to do? Another reason why our people need to get involved in these schools to make sure that we are laying, laying down the firm disciplinary lines that we need to do, uh, need to be doing. Because, you know, there are some in the schools will just allow anything to happen. This should not be going on in the schools. And I'm not suggesting it only happens in the schools where our children are. And I'm sure my guest is not suggesting that either. Because we know that, you know, in the private schools, drugs have been running yeah, all the time. The they, they, yeah. They, they, the they, recently. Yeah. And there's a documentary about a, school, a majority white school in Manchester. Where mm -hmm. they, the boys were, were, well, they were suspic they were sus suspicion of them having drugs because teachers snelled it on these three boys. It's all mm -hmm. on YouTube, you can watch it. Mm -hmm. I put it up and nobody has anything to say, but you know, they weren't um, searched, but they, you know, um, they, well, they, they were searched. They oh. were searched, but they didn't find any drugs on the boys, mm -hmm. but they didn't call the police. Mm -hmm. And no mm -hmm. further search was done. Yeah. But the drugs in schools throughout is an issue. Throughout the you UK. stop like, hiding them from these issues. Throughout the UK. And it's happening because it's been allowed to happen. 
You know, there. I'm sure if you was running the school, you wouldn't be allowing any drugs to be coming on the premises in the school that uh, you was running. So we do need to get involved and be taking firm action and making sure that there's proper security and support for our children, because none of us want our children to be going into these schools and being introduced to drugs while they're in school. Never used to happen in the days where I was in school. The worst you'd get is cigarettes around the back. You know, <laughs> drugs, you Good know. Drugs. Yeah. Still it's, drugs. It's, oh. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid so. Still <laughs> drugs. Still kills you. I mean, this one, that one kills you at the end of the day, you know what I mean? But the thing is, I mean, the, the other issue is, um, you know, we've got, you know, we've got organisations like the Black Child Agenda, you know, we've got organisations like the Communities Empowerment Network. I'm constantly putting up organisations on my Facebook page, in my newsletter, solutions to problems. I'm constantly getting phone calls of solutions. I've, I've had to go to schools myself and speak to young people who are being found with stuff on them and parents calling me rather than get the police involved. I will go and help them, but we can't keep on hiding from these situations. Mm -hmm. can't keep on hiding this so everybody hiding. watching if you're not involved in an organization and you're not supporting some of these organizations that are crying out for help and support then you're part of the problem and if i'm not involved i include myself in that i'd be part of the problem as well because these organizations need people to function effectively uh you know they we can't just wait until a problem surfaces and then we all start screaming about it as our guest is saying, we've got to be there doing the works at a grassroots level on a daily basis to prevent these problems from happening in the first place. And if we were all involved, then maybe our Saturday schools could become not just a Saturday school, but a full-time, but full-time school. Oh, we've been there, sis. By now, we really we've ought to been be there. full-time school. I've been trying to set up a full-time African heritage school in this country since 2005. What's the problem? Um, the people involved in education don't want to come forward. The people involved with property don't want to come forward. The people involved with um, financial support don't want to come forward. Because any time we want our full-time Afri African heritage school in this country, the government's not going to support that. They're going mm -hmm. to have to be either fee-paying schools or sponsored by a business or businesses. Because this is what happens with we, other communities. They, businesses come forward and sponsor their own schools for their children to go there for free or a minimum payment. Wow. The government will not support this. So since 2005, I've been involved in trying to set up full-time schools in this country. So when this free schools scam came out, this was an opportunity for us to get together and form mm. our own schools. At mm. the time, the government says, OK, you can form a school anywhere, minimum of four children above a chip shop, anywhere. You get, you get your children together, find premises, you can form a school. I thought, OK, great. Now, 10 African heritage Saturday schools put in an application for a free school. Ten. And, it, and we formed the um, African Schools Alliance. So the mm -hmm. idea was if one school got through, because we knew it would be hard, mm -hmm. if one school got through, we'll just replicate that um, blueprint and open other schools. All 10 got rejected. Yeah, not the classic example was um, Kay Johnson. She was running the, the Diamond, Diamond Academy mm -hmm. in Lewisham. And she was uh, running it as an a academy specifically for boys and every academy has their theme, be it sports, science, or, or drama. Her theme was teaching entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she sent in an application to the Department of Education, and it was rejected uh, for being uh, deemed too ambitious. The words were used, too ambitious. She took Michael Gove to court, and she won her case, but she still didn't get support to run her school. Um, she's running it, you know, from a small premises, but she's still going there. But somebody, somebody like Kay Johnson, she needs a building, a big building, pay for us, feel we. Did they not? Is this not the case, the same case where they actually took her idea and started rolling it out themselves? They probably did. They probably did. Because at the end of the day, any idea needs money to back it up. And if we, if we don't fund our own, it's not going to come from anybody else. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't want us to progress. Yeah, yeah. We know yeah. that. We keep on saying it. We keep on repeating it. One out of the what ten. Do about it? Successful. Yeah. Like I said before, yeah. be the change you you know. Be the change you want to see. Yeah, yeah. So, family, if you've got the money, if you are in a fortunate position where you've been very successful in business, and you want to encourage, you know, you want to see your community advance. You want to help to elevate members of your community, the next generation. You know, get in touch with our brother uh, Naya. 
He's uh, involved with numerous Saturday schools. They can come together and form a full-time school. As you say, we've got to be the change that we want to see. We can't be just complaining all the time, you know. And the thing is that we find, and especially on my radio station, we say this quite a lot, uh, Dr. Abu's coined, coined the phrase, there are the willing and the able. There are those who are willing, but maybe not able to do what needs to be done. And there are those who are able, but not willing to do what needs to be done. And that's the problem that we've got in our community, you know? So those who are able, please, you know, start showing some will to do and uh, invest in some of these organizations that's that the can word. make a difference. Invest, invest in our children's future. Now yeah. you can pay for a child's fee in a Saturday school, it's 10 pound a week. It's nothing, and that's like nine months of the year. It's nothing, mm -hmm. 90 pound for the year for a child to go to a Saturday school. I was a single parent on benefits and I was able to pay for my own children plus two other children who needed, you know, the parents needed help. I stepped in and helped. And I, I was broke. <laughs> Don't tell the children about this because every time I mention this story, they go crazy. They say, Daddy, we could have gone on holiday with the money you spent. I'm like, oh, God, you know, I had to help. You know what I mean? I had to do it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. we have more fathers than more men like you in our community. I just, I'm oh, a doer, well, just get things done. I like, to, you know, be the change you want to see. I want mm -hmm. our children to do well. Just mm -hmm. get, just get on with it and do it. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. something about the glass ceiling of children that do well. Now, I supplement schools. It's not just for children that are struggling in the schools. Is because my children were not struggling. It's also for the children who have reached that ceiling and can't go any further because my children, they breeze for all the reading books mm -hmm. and it got to a level where they couldn't go any further. I'm, I said to the teacher, why can't they read, you know, the, the, the year up books? Oh, no, mm -hmm. we don't do that. Because mm -hmm. no, no, they can hold them down and hold them back. You know, in, you know, outside Europe, you know, if your child's doing well, especially in the African continent, if your child's doing well, you mm -hmm. move them up a year. Yeah, yeah. And, and things like, and like, back then, I don't know how it is now, but it was legal to actually do that mm -hmm. it is legal for a child to move up a year if they do it exceptionally well there's something they just refrain from and i've had uh, um contact with three parents who are going for the same thing mm -hmm. and somebody told me that it, it is legal i don't know if it is now but you know, back then it was legal mm -hmm. and i said to the i said to mention solicitor to the teacher they come back and said yeah children got moved up a year <laughs> Yes, there are some magic words that make things happen. Mm. Yeah, my brother, I know you've got uh, something to share with us, a presentation to share with us. Let me go over to you now so that you can screen share and uh, show us your presentation. And while you're getting ready, let me just uh, go into the chat. I uh, want to rise up. Uh, uh, Abini Maroon say, Nangadef, uh, Jamarek, uh, Akwaba, Jambo, Habari. Love and light to Sister Shanice and all. Okay, let's uh, go over to uh, the screen now and we will be black uh, taking your comments from the chat after we've heard from our brother Imara. Yeah, so um, yeah. this year now, um, March now, I've been doing NABS for 15 years. The National Association of Black Suffrage Schools has been running for 15 years. So this, I mean, this is, I will just show you some of the events that I've done. There's other events that were not filmed and a lot more stuff goes on in the background. But these are just some of the events I've been involved with over the last 15 years. So, I mean, this was based on the homeschoolers um, coming to me saying, Brother Nia, we've got, you know, we've got homeschoolers and we don't tend to do much in the summer. Can you do something for us in the summer? So I said, okay, I'll put on some events. So the first, actually 2009 was my first NABS conference. And that was at the Hackney Museum. Um, you know, the, the, the museum creator, uh, curator came to me and said, Brother Nia, I like what you do. Would you like to use the museum's pre uh, premises for an event? I'm like, cool. Thank you very much. So my first event was 2009. It was with the Black and Other UK Home Educators. And I still got, you know, you can go on my website and you can still see the curriculum that we had. Uh, we, had we had Tony Warner there. We had, uh, we had African yoga. We had all kinds of things, you know what I mean? Was, uh, Pablo, yeah, Pablo, we had African yoga. We had um, yeah, Tony Warner. Um, Sandra, Sandra Hurst, Dr. Sandra Hurst came and spoke about um, money being fake. You know, I mean, she, I mean, she was an excellent sister. She's passed away now, but she put in a fantastic presentation that was her remit. So that was in 2000 
and nine, my first NABS conference. And it went, for, went very well. And that was just a one day event. That's me with some hair. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, one, one day event. And that's my son there. He was like six years old, I think at the time, six or seven years old. Oh, and at that event, we had um, Sister um, Candice Chimbiri came to trial out her first book. And in that clip, where the children actually were going through her book, trying it out there. And it was about, um, about uh, Kemet, I can't remember the title of the book, sorry, my brain's fried. But she trialed out the book there, and then from there, she got some feedback, and she was able to sell the book and be very successful with her first book. And it was trialed out at the, at the NABS conference. So the second year now, 2010, uh, an organization called The 100 Mothers uh, got in touch and said, listen, we can do like a, a, a longer period of events. We just do a week. I'm like, wow, a week. And they said, look, we help you out. We do a week. So The 100 Mothers organization came involved. We did a full week of NADS events in Tottenham, uh, in Bruce Grove. Uh, we had a very good presentation by um, uh, Twilight Bay. These sisters came down from Birmingham. Um, the timeline was uh, introduced with um, with the brother there. There's the Twilight Bay. He did a very good presentation. So that was a full week, 2010. We did a full week. This event is the pioneers of South London, South Metro schools in 2011. Brought together all the schools in South London and got did a presentation. 2011. Uh, I think this was at Centerprise, the first event at Centerprise, a full week. At Centerprise, my brother um, um, Emmanuel, let's use the premises. We had poetry. We had oh, so many events. You, know, you, you, you can see the curriculum. This um, brother Emmanuel gave us um, Centerprise for a full week. We had the urban lawyers came down, did a presentation of, on law. Uh, the, the, the curriculum was mad for the full week. Uh, so, um, Ewan Witter did it, I was talking about finances. And I did a, a this organization came to, came to me. I said, listen, we'd like to um, give a family a full uh, week, uh, weekend, all expenses paid trip to the seaside. The only um, stipulation is that they have never been to the seaside before in their life. So I was able to select um, three families from um, supplementary schools who have never been to a, a seaside before due to financial is uh, issues. And this organization came in and, and gave them a free, fully paid up weekend in Folkestone through NABS. That was beautiful. This is little Isis. Isis, I just saw her recently, Isis, when she was young. That was very good. 2012 came. Now, this was a mad one. This is the year of the Olympics. Again, it was, was at the um, Centre Prize in Hackney. This event, I did 65 events in one week. Wow at Center Prize, 65 events in one week, from poetry to the history of black people in, in um, sports. We did a fundraiser for the Marmar Art Center. We did oh, so much stuff. We, the first event was about autism in the African heritage community with um, um, Vanessa Bob, which has now uh, pushed her so much. She's um, started an organization called A Second Voice, which deals specifically about um, autism in the African heritage community. And the following year, this is the first, this is 2013 now, and this was the first event at Burbeck University. The sister who worked at the Burbeck University, we went actually um, to the Burbeck University when my son was at the West Side Young Leaders Academy with brother Andrew Mohammed and brother Leo Mohammed. My son was going to the West Side Young Leaders Academy, and at the trip, we went to the Burbeck University. And at that time, children were not allowed in universities. It's like a no-go area for children. So it was amongst the first people to bring children into university to give the children a wow factor of like, it's like eight, eight nine-year-olds, to show them early somewhere to aim for, to aim, look at a university, see how big and glorious it is, and somewhere to aim for. And since then, many schools now are doing trips to universities for, for um, junior school age children, or, or, um, or early secondary school um, age children. And um, said, look, we like, we like what NABS does. You're welcome to come and use the venue. So here we did a, um, an event in 2013. And every year is a theme. This theme was business and science. I actually had some children come forward and um, launch their businesses, launch their books. And you can see some of the people that were there. 
And it was a re really good event, very good event. These are, and these are the sponsors. So every event I do, I do have sponsors that come through from my community. I'm very grateful to the sponsors that always come through for these events and help sponsor it. Obviously, it comes out of my pocket, which goes to not having a holiday again and my children go crazy. <laughs> this is some, this is the, the event, um, the plan for the whole week. This is the curriculum for the full week. We had hip hop meets science. We had Dr. Mark Richards. Uh, he's a fellow at... Um, college, university, or one of the universities, he came down. Robin Walker was there, with, um, education advocacy workshop with uh, Communities Empowerment Network. You know, we're something for everybody, with fathers, education and role, we'll talk about that. We had um, Jennifer Carides launched her book there called The Apple and the Rain, There's a book launched there. We had a, a discussion on um, what the, is there a need for African Heritage Month? Again, we had a second voice doing autism in the black community. I had to come back every year because it's, it's an issue that, needs to be dealt with, even spoken about. Mental health in our community is very, very taboo till now, still. That was 2013. And this is a young brother who launched his, uh, who's, who's doing his um, rap music, came to do a presentation. There's a Cambridge, uh, Candice Chambury there. And um, Paul, Paul Williams, Michael Williams. Is a lawyer from CEN that deals with um, advocacy in schools and actually teach parents now and still teach parents how to be an advocate, how to understand the school system. And we had um, Davis Williams come down to do a presentation as well. This young boy, he, he, he um, launched his book at the event. And this was a discussion about autism in the African heritage community. And at this event, we actually had an apology from the National Autistic Society. Actually, a lady came down to the presentation. She heard the stories from the parents. She started crying and left. I said, so you can't leave, you've got to say something. She came back, she apologized that the National Autistic Society were kind of like ignorant to the cries of the black family through this event. And I think this, through this event, we had, um, uh, what's his name again? I can't remember his name now, but we, we had a young boy who came out and he's very successful now through this event. We realized he was autistic. Tony Warner was always there. And I also helped with Tony Warner help sponsor the events with the Nzinga Lecture Series. I think it's like number 62 now, and in the 60s now. The Nzinga Lecture Series is at uh, different universities around, around London. These are some of the other discussions I've had. Uh, um, these, I did monthly events in 2014. This is, discussion was about um, uh, the role of the black churches. And they admitted the, the black churches, the, the pastors who turned up admitted that black churches were not doing enough. And they had to do more. That's my daughter doing a, a poetry presentation. This body does um, um, animation and we had the discussion of why do we need Black History Month? His brother Andrew as well was there. He's a very good supporter of that, always has been. Mr. Neil Mayers, gifted in primary, failing in secondary. Does excellent, he's a, he does a lot of teaching now, he does excellent work in our community. Twenty fourteen was the last week at Burbeck. The theme was health and nutrition. These are the sponsors again that have come forward to support the event. Uh, we did an event um with uh oh, I did, um sorry, see my brain goes. One of the sponsors was, uh, oh, see, my brain's fried, sorry. This is the National Supplement Schools Week 2013. So uh, we did a dance session with the, with the parents. Dementia, Culture Dementia UK. We did an event about dementia. See, I think, I think I've got it myself. My brain's going. Dementia, the African Heritage Dementia in the UK. We did an event about that. We need to do more. We need to support. Um, organizations. We've got the um, Pearl um, Foundation in Birmingham and we've got the Culture Dementia UK. This is the young boy. I've got his name now. Beckford. Joshua Beckford. That was Joshua Beckford that came to the NABS event in 2014. And from that event, we, we, we were able to find out that he was autistic. But the boy is one of the top 100 prodigy children on the planet. 
one of the most intelligent children on the planet. Went to university and killed it at 12 years old. Wow. He's got, actually, and the thing is, though, he's got more fans abroad than he has in the UK. When he goes to a, an event abroad, he gets upgraded to first class. He's got 10,000 followers in Greece. Wow. But not many people know about Joshua Beckford. Mm-hmm. Right now, he's doing some brilliant stuff, you know, organizing schools and hospitals in Nigeria. So, you know, that's his, he's actually going forward and dealing with that. That's our Baba Elder Eric Huntley, he's one of the forerunners of supplementary schools in this country back in the 60s. This is the event at Ben TV. That's one of my um, bios. That's the picture of my, my children. And that was celebrating, in 2017, I was celebrating 10 years of NABS. Again, supporters. That little um, multicolored jigsaw there is, is the, the second voice organization. And I was like, at the event, I do the awards, the NABS awards. So the 2017 was the first year of doing the NABS awards. Robert Amenwa came down and did a presentation. And these are some of the winners of the awards, some of the supporters of NABS, I awarded them. And the people that are doing um, cultural education in their community, community activism in their community. And another award I'm doing as well now, which is giving back ex-students that go back to their satellite schools and, and help out and teach in schools and help the next generation. So I'll, give, I'll, I'll call it the Ujama uh, Award for children that go back and teach in their satellite schools. So 2017 was the first year. And these are some of the recipients. That's the Kiddies, uh, uh, Kiddies Club in, in um, South East London. And then set the second year, 2019, that's the second year of the NABS Awards. Again, these are the sponsors. See West Side Gunnelies Academy there. And the, the, you see the, the previous picture of my children? This is the same setting, but older. <laughs> and these are the awards that I was handing out in 2018. And since then, I've done 2019, lockdown came. So now I'm doing it online. Yeah, so that was it. That's some, some of the events that NAMS has been doing over the last... 15 years. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing works, my brother. Absolutely amazing. Uh, and that's what I love about the guests that uh, grace this platform. Then you are the, you know, the movers and shakers within our community. And, you know, as I said last strong when we had Brother Andrew Muhammad on, if, you know, half of our men were doing half as much as you all, we would have advanced so, so much further uh, as a community. And, you know, you're a man who talks the talk and walks the walk, and you are definitely making the changes that you want to see. A phenomenal lineup of uh, events there. And as an organizer myself, I know only too well the amount of work that actually goes into organizing any one event. And you're talking about, you know, series upon series upon series of events, you know, pulling all the people together to get them on board to support, you know, and then doing all of the work that's involved. It is a phenomenal amount of work. And I heard you say, my brother, you've even sacrificed holidays with your children so that you could finance uh, some of these programs and initiatives. So hats off to you, my brother, 100,000 props to you. You know, you're definitely a gem uh, within our community. Let me I'm, go. I'm very the- grateful for the sponsors that have come forward. They, they, they've helped a lot. They, you know, very grateful for the sponsors. That come forward and all the future sponsors that come through. Yes. I'm very grateful. <laughs> so, you know, on that note, if people wanted to get in touch with you, uh, how could they reach you? Uh, go to the NABS website, which is www.nabss.org.uk, or the, and, and you know, all the contact details are there, or info at nabs.org.uk, my email address. 
Okay, fantastic. You got it there, family. And we'll make sure that it's underneath the video as well. I'm here in the, the UK call right now. Oh boy. Uh, Abini is saying she, she's uh, logging in from the call UK. Uh, JJ's like, hi, gorgeous. I'm watching you from the UK. Rise up, rise up, JJ. Afro Jamo, she's telling people, look for come out of the UK. Don't be scared. Take I'm staying call. put. I'm <laughs> staying put. Not everybody's going to run and hide, go back to Africa. Some people will stay here and fight the good fight. So if you want to run, go back to Africa, or do your thing. I'm staying put and I'm dealing with the people that are going to stay here because not everybody's going to leave. There's work to be done. Not everybody's going to leave. So I will help the people that stay. You want to yeah. run, go ahead and run. There's work to be done globally. It's not about running. It's about relocating. Yeah, I hear people say, I want to go back to Africa. I want to lie on the beach. I want the sunshine. Listen, oh, I want to go back to Africa. Go back to Africa and do some work. Absolutely. Oh, and lie on the beach. Don't be lying on the beach and retire. What? There's time for that too. You see, in England, when you've got your social time, what can you do with your social time? You have to stay indoors because it's so cold. No, of course no. not. Nah, but yeah, in, in Africa, you know, you can do your works and you can find time in your social time to lie. You seriously people. think that Nabs only works in the summertime? I work 24-7, 365. You know, if it rains, I get an umbrella. If it's cold, I get my gloves. There's a solution for everything. And the weather is not an excuse. It's not an excuse at all. Absolutely agree. And, uh, you know, the works has got to be done. The works has got to be done on the continent, in Europe, in America, in the Caribbean. There's a phenomenal amount of works to be done. And for me, what's really important is that we link up and support where we can. I mean, I'm on the motherland right now, but you know what? Uh, it's all about still recognizing the great works that's happening uh, in the UK, KK, definitely. And uh, we can't all run and use Europe. We are the indigenous people of Europe. Yeah, we are so the indigenous people of Europe. We're so home. We can't, we can, yeah. So many of us who feel at home, they are already home in Europe. Uh, don't let, you know, these Johnny come late, these tell us otherwise. You know, Cheddar Man uh, is a reminder, you know, 25,000 year old uh, skeleton remains of uh, Africans uh, being found uh, in Europe and older skeletons as well is evidence of our uh, historical uh, connections to that part of the world. And that's, you know, well before the ice cap melted and, and, and the new species came into the region. And so, you know, they're very determined to make sure that they try and give us the impression today that uh, they are the ones who have a claim for Europe, but that is definitely not the case. Uh, so there's a job for us to do everywhere. Want to rise up, Itana? Rise up, Itana. Thank you for the works behind the scenes in putting all of this together for me, uh, bringing our wonderful week, uh, speakers together and on board. And she's saying, greetings, Brother Naya and Sister Shanice from Iceland, UK, KK. <laughs> Miss Diamond, 517, welcome, say, yay, Dad, is that your baby? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Abini, rising up, Sister Afro Jamo as well. Icon Bay saying, peace and love, Sister Shanice and Brother I, uh, and Sister Shen, Brother Icon Bay in the classroom, taking in the education, uh, er, uh, education. Erudition, uh, I got there in the end. Let's keep rising, more love. More love back at you, my brother. JJ said, uh, Chris told us we are genetically different, even though our brain, even our brain development, absolutely, we are genetically different. You know, all of the DNA analysis has actually proved that as well. We don't have primate DNA or Neanderthal DNA you know, unlike, you know, the other species, we are genetically different. Afro Jamo says that Robin Walker was her first African studies teacher. Mm -hmm. woo, woo, woo. We've been trying to get Robin Walker on board. We've Very yet busy, man. Able, I, I know, we've yet to be able to pin him down, but family, we are trying, because a few of you have asked that we reach out to him and we have done so. Fingers crossed, uh, we will be able to get him on the platform one of these days soon. Rise up, y'all, tuning in. Malanga, rise up. Raw reality, rise up, rise up. Demo Q, rise up again. Saying five and six year olds excluded from school and parents told their children suffering from mental health, autistic, ADH, etc. 
We need our own schools, don't we, Demo Q? Uh, enough fire from Sister Afrojamo. Rise up, Cherry Bee in the house as well. Uh, rise up, uh, Kimani in the house. Uh, rising up, uh, the X Ace 99 saying black schools, yes, but totally no uh, to African schools. <laughs> it's all about choice at the end of the day. It's about choice. <laughs> <laughs> black schools but not african schools well ace you're gonna have to come and uh you know address us on that one i'm not getting that <laughs> uh, uh kimani say rise up our warrior queen uh greetings afrojamo and uh, uh ace is back saying nothing will work for any kind of black people in the uk born black if the UK blacks don't take their rightful places in UK society. Of course, absolutely agree. Those who are there, yeah, you've got to fulfill your purpose there and do the work. Rise up, Sonia. Agree, brother. Stay UK. You've work to be done here for us. I'm doing like whilst, whilst here too. That's wow, from Sonia. Sonia. Big up, Sonia. Doing some great works out there uh, as well. Absolutely agree. Wherever we are, we have have to be doing the works. Uh, finally, Shanice woke up. Oh, was I sleeping before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got our brother Ace is pro UK. UK for the blacks, not the Africans. Not the Africans. UK for the blacks. Mm. So uh, I think, yeah, because you're focusing uh, the last couple of shows we have been focusing on the UK got some more shows lined up where we're focusing on the UK but we do also recognize the fact that we are Africans in the UK and you know you can take an African out of Africa and put that African in China put the African in India put the African in America put the African anywhere you want it's still an African in America or an African in Europe or an African in China yeah just because they reach England, they don't turn, suddenly they become black and they're not an African. Black is just a description. Black is a description. This is not a landmass. <laughs> Africa, Africa, yeah, and that being an African relates you to a landmass. It tells you who you are as a people, where your land is. Just like, you know, being Chinese tell you you belong to the land of China. Being an Indian, you know, you've got the landmass. Uh, India there, even though we owned all of these places, but that's another story. We'll go on to that when we get into the history segment that we've got coming up. My brother, Naya, you have been absolutely phenomenal. What a man you are. You know, uh, you are definitely a man, not just who's talking the talk, but walking the walks and head and shoulders above uh, many, many others. And so, my brother, in closing, what would your message be uh, to those in the community who could be doing so much more, but maybe feeling, you know, a bit apprehensive, you know, uh, you know, maybe feeling that they're lacking in confidence, may not feel as courageous as they maybe need to feel to take the steps. What would you encourage them to do? How, how can you, you know, persuade? What can you say to these people to persuade them to make the move uh, to be the change that they want to see? One of the hashtags I like to send around is stop waiting for drama before you start to act. Because when you start acting, it's usually too late for somebody. So try and be preemptive and think, you know, if I do this, this ain't going to happen. It's like when you have your children, you make this area safe. If you leave sharp knives around, you think, if I move that knife out of the way, they won't hurt themselves. So mm -hmm. just think like that for our community. If we remove the danger in our community, our children will go on true. You know what I mean? So if you don't have the confidence or the ability to do it yourself, support those that do. Support those that are doing the works. If you can't do it financially, then physically, you know, pop in, help out with the emails, help out with something. You know, if you're there financially, you've got money to burn, Dash a little ten pound here and there to a black organization and, and help them out. Stop them having to use this begging bowl to people that keep on saying, "Oh, you got to do this, you got to do that." Just help them out. The, the mad, bad man back in the day, just pop down to a sack school with a little brown envelope. All oh, that, you know what I mean? Mm. Everybody can do. It. I, I do it as a single parent. With Brock, I can do it. Just a little help out. And if you can't do that, at least share the events on show, social media. Share the organizations. I constantly put up links of mental health organizations, gang, invent, gang intervention organizations. You know what I mean? Just share the link. That's it. Click share. Done. 
Mm-hmm. Simple. Because when I have these discussions on, you know, you see me on Facebook, as near Imam on Facebook. When I have these discussions, people talk about, oh, these gangs and this gang, this and gang, that. I put up a link of six, six organizations dealing with gang intervention in our organization. And I check people's face um, pages who have been in that discussion. I say, are you going to share the event? I say, yeah, 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 share the link. I check the page, they don't share nothing. We talk about mental health and, and you know, people say, yeah, mental health is all to be. I put up a link of seven African heritage mental health organizations. Share the link. I check your page. You don't share nothing. But if there's a gang fight or someone getting stabbed, you share it. Mm-hmm. Make it go viral. This person got stabbed. Mm-hmm. Child Q. Make it go viral. But where was the solution going viral in the first place? Mm-hmm. Think ahead. Think about solutions and just get involved. If you can't get involved, support those that do. Please remind uh, our viewers, my brother, of your website address and where they can go to find uh, the information of all these organisations. Uh, the website is the National Association of Black Stuff Mitch Schools, which is www.nabss.org.uk. Uh, I'm on Twitter as NABS3, the number three, uh, um, Instagram as NABS3, and you can find me, uh, the National Association of Black Stuff Mitch Schools on Facebook. And it's me, Neo Imara, on Facebook. And I, I'm not there to make friends. I'm just there to make a difference. So I'm not pulling any punches, I'm afraid. So go on with it. <laughs> uh, please send me the links, yeah, uh, to all of your social media uh, platforms. And I'll post them, yeah, under the... And video. I do, for the last 15 years, I've been doing a weekly newsletter with all the organisations I've been talking about in there every week. We've got Black History Studies, Black History Walks, Communities Empowerment Network, Black Child Agenda, links are there every week. Share the team. Yeah, yeah. please do send me all that info and I'll post it under the video. And we challenge you all to share, every one of you uh, that watches, we challenge you to go onto our brother's website and to share the information so that parents have the information that they need uh, and know where they can go to offer support so that if they need the support, the organization has already been sufficiently bolstered uh, to be able to respond in a way that they would want it to. Uh, let's get a last few comments in the chat. Uh, Howard, knowledge is key wherever we are. Absolutely, Ace99. We are and have always been Black European people, and they were the original. Absolutely, but remember, uh, because uh, you know Ace is saying he's Black, not African. Remember. That's a dumb, that discussion that's, that, that discussions of West time you identify with how, whatever you want if you say you're black and you're doing the works I'm cool with that if you say you're African and you're doing the works I'm cool with that if you say you're African and you ain't doing nothing I'll go to the guy who's calls himself black and he's doing the works it's about what you're doing it's not what you call yourself yeah I know there's it's so much miseducation though um our people are so confused about who they are it, it's just uh, an example of the extent to which uh, the miseducation system is just, you know, miseducating our children and our it people. It was made for that purpose Imagine. and we're still using it. Not knowing who you are and where you're from. Not knowing who your ancestors are and where your ancestors are from. Not understanding the lineage. It's, you know, how can you tell a Chinese man that he's not a China man? Because he wants to describe himself as a yellow man. It's, you know, people look at us and we think we're just so... Um, uh, beyond uh, helping, but, we, you we know? Also, also have, we, there was a discussion about you know um, African heritage children, or especially um, children from the West Atlantic African islands, aka Caribbean, are not doing so well in school, and we're at the bottom of the, the tables, and they put the Chinese at the top. How many Chinese children do we see in our schools? Hardly any. I see a whole bunch of Chinese people around, mm. but hardly any are in our schools. Where mm. are the Chinese children going? To Chinese paid for and run boarding schools paid yeah. for by Chinese businesses. Yeah. There was a We've fundraiser a, a few We've years ago for Chinese up. schools. They raised 24 million pounds for Chinese wow. boarding schools in the UK. 24 million pounds they That's raised. a fundraiser. Where are our, our African... They pay for their own stuff. That's why I've seen Chinese people marching and doing petitions say we want inclusivity. They do their own thing. I had a Chinese mm-hmm. neighbour upstairs mm-hmm. um, where I lived before. He's been in the country for 45 years. He doesn't speak a word of English. 
<laughs> when he sees me, he's like, "Hi, hi, hi, hi." What's to touch my hair? I tell, "Hi, how are you?" And one day, he surprised me. He says to me, "Can I ask you a question?" I'm like, "Raw, you speak English." He says, "Why do you send your children to the white man's school?" And he walked off. So all that time, he's been watching what I'm been doing. Yeah. But the thing is, he's got everything. He's got his food, his housing, everything sorted out by Chinese people. Mm, but we love to complain and do nothing. Yeah. Fix up, people. Come on. Yeah. yeah. we got to fix up. It's time to fix up. No more excuses, family. Okay. We've been out of the... Yeah. Okay. We know we got knocked back for four or five hundred years. And we've experienced and gone through what uh, many other races haven't gone through. But... You know, our ancestors have shown us that post-enslavement, we can still do and accomplish so much. Black Wall Street is a reminder of what we can accomplish when we come together as a people. And that is precisely now what we need to be doing. My brother, you are doing an amazing job. Keep doing the great works. We want to continue to rise you up. Thank you for allowing me to spotlight you tonight on the platform and to, you know, get the opportunity to showcase to our family around the world the great work that you. you're doing here in the UKKK. So family, just in case you feel say some of our man them day and them now do not, just remember the works that this great man and Naya Imani is doing in our community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Family, family in the chat, thank you so much. Each and every one of you, it's been a pleasure uh, having you on the platform today, interacting within the chat. Please remember to join us next strong where we have our brother, Leo Muhammad. Uh, if you don't know our brother, you got to get to know brother Leo Muhammad. Put the words out. Look forward to you joining us. And I will be getting the information from our brother, uh, Naya, uh, regarding all of his social media platforms so that you can go there, visit and share his links. Please share, share, share. Thank you so much again, Brother Naya. It's Welcome. been great, great hearing your story. Keep up the great works. More love, more power, more strength to you and everyone watching. Sister Shanice out of here for